Welcome back to the workbench. You join me here as I'm about to build this, the Airfix Churchill Mark 7 in 176 scale from Airfix. Join me in this video as I get stuck into this vintage Airfix kit and see if you can still get a decent model at the end of it. I'm Matt and this is Model Minutes. Coming up in this video, cutting, sanding, painting, decals, and maybe even some gluing. Stay tuned for that. The Churchill tank was introduced to British military service in 1941, and was so named after the Prime Minister of the time. Although not blessed with good visibility for the driver, nor an impressive top speed, it did however have good firepower and armour for the period. If you'd like to see an unboxing review on this model, I completed one of these previously and the video can be found on my channel. It takes a detailed look at the contents of the box, including the instructions, sprues and decals. For this video, I will be focusing primarily on how the kit builds up. I'll pop a full list of all the products that are used on the screen now, so feel free to pause and make a note of them if you want to. And before I start the build, as always, please remember that adult supervision may be required due to the use of sharp tools and toxic paints and chemicals. Airfix recommends this kit to those aged 8 years and older. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is give these plastic parts a wash in warm soapy water. I did add a dash of vinegar to the water and it's going to help cut through any oil, grease or dirt that might be left over from the moulding process. Once they had all had a good soak, they were then left to air dry. With the parts now dry, I snapped the sprues containing the wheels and axles away from the main sprue. It was mentioned to me in comments previously that they should line up and make assembling these parts much easier. So let's try it out. There was a little bit of flash on these parts, so I gave them a quick tidy up with my sanding stick. A small amount of Tamiya extra thin cement was then applied to the axles in preparation for the wheels. The wheels could then be placed over the top and lo and behold, it actually worked. Everything lined up quite well here and saved me from having to glue each individual wheel into place, which would have taken ages. Some more Tamiya extra thin cement was applied to help make sure they all stuck together and then I moved on to repeat this process for the other sprue of axles and wheels. With that done and everything now dry, the wheels can be carefully cut away with a knife. I then turned them over and repeated the same process for the wheels on the other side of the axle. With all the wheels and axles now joined, they were removed from the sprues to reveal the finished articles. Make sure you put these somewhere safe, because being so small you do run the risk of losing them. These can now be cemented into their holes in the sides of the tank. I'm using Humbrol poly cement here as it is a little thicker and will help keep the components a little more snug as they dry. This was quite a fiddly step and some tweezers could have been useful to get them all in the right place. The drive sprockets can now be assembled and they come in three parts, a centre axle and two gears that cement either side. I joined these parts together and then glued them into place in the side of the tank. There is one at either side of the assembly, so I repeated these steps for the second one and then cemented that into place as well. With that done, it will have to be repeated so you end up with two identical side parts for the tank. And here's one I made earlier. Now I'm going to do some painting. I'm using this Vallejo World War I Russian Uniform Green as apparently it's quite a close match to the recommended colour from Humbrol. I would have used their choice of paint, which is 159 khaki drab, but it only comes in enamel, and I would much prefer an acrylic paint. So this is the substitute that I found instead. I thinned the paint with Tamiya acrylic thinners at a rough ratio of two parts paint to one part thinner, but I pretty much mixed it by eye. Thinning your paints will help to avoid leaving brush strokes in the finish when it dries, 
and I used a soft medium brush to paint the side assemblies of the tank. Both inside and out were painted. I'm doing this now as very soon I'll have to add the tracks and once that is done I won't be able to paint the insides of these parts anymore. Speaking of the tracks, with the green paint now drying I decided to give the tracks a coat of Humbrol 33 matte black acrylic. Again it was thinned with Tamiya acrylic thinners and I repeated the process and covered the entire tracks with this paint. When that paint was dry, Humbrol 11 silver and 171 antique bronze were mixed to give a metallic rust effect. It was then dry brushed over the tracks to bring out the details. To dry brush, most of the paint is removed onto a paper towel and then the residue is brushed onto the parts. The raised details will collect the paint, but it will leave the recessed areas clear, which will help give contrast and an impression of shade. With those paints dry, I cut the two tracks away from each other. This was a hassle. It just didn't separate or cut cleanly, so I had to go back over and trim the excess material away. It's not the best design in the world for tank tracks, if I'm honest. I thought I'd try the method mentioned in the instructions to join these tracks together. So what I did was tape them to the workbench and then use a lighter to heat up my knife. The idea is that if you melt the two ends together, it will help keep them secure. And to be honest, it actually worked on my Sherman. But the tracks on this one are not as well molded, and I bet you can guess what happened. Yep, I broke it. So let's try a different method. Super glue. No bells or whistles here. I simply applied a small amount of super glue and left it to dry. It worked perfectly and now I have two rubber band tracks ready to go. I carefully stretch them over the wheels and push them into place. It's worth noting that there is a right way of putting these on and you will have to check the picture on the box to make sure you get the tread of the track facing the correct way. With that done, the other side of the track assembly can now be cemented into place. This is not a great fit and I found that having all those little wheels with their own little holes was an absolute pain. After some considerable time, I did manage to get it all cemented into place, but a few wheels are slightly misaligned and if you look carefully, you can probably see them. But I thought it was time to move on with my life and complete the next step. The upper and lower parts of the hull of the tank can now be cemented together and they fit with no issues. Smaller details can be added, including what I believe are the engine exhausts and doors for the access hatches. It's worth noting that as all the hatches come separately fitted, you could position them in either open or closed options if you really wanted to. The hull can now be cemented to one of the track assemblies. It glues into a marked area and I didn't really have any problems getting it to fit. With that done, the other track can be cemented onto the other side. Some storage boxes need to be cemented onto the sides of the tank, along with some spare tracks. These locate quite well and just need a little pressure to hold them in place as the cement dries. The front machine gun can now be added into place. In hindsight though, I wish I'd done this much earlier on, as now I've got the two tracks in side by side, it's very difficult to get my hands in the middle. After some fiddling and perseverance, I got there in the end. I thought I would make a slight improvement to the main gun and decided to drill out a small amount of material to make it look as though you could actually shoot through it. I used a fine drill bit in a pin vise to do this. With that done, it does actually make a noticeable difference. The main gun can now be slotted into place. If you don't use any cement, it is able to raise and lower. The front plate of the turret can be glued in when that's done. The lid of the rear storage box is now added, which is then followed by the top hatch and its doors. The turret assembly is, in essence, now complete. It simply slots into the hole in the tank and if you don't apply any cement, it can be made to turn freely. I got the Vallejo green back out, thinned it again and then applied it to the rest of the model. A couple of layers might be needed to get a nice even layer of paint. With that paint now dry, I used Humbrol 32 dark grey acrylic to carefully highlight some of the smaller details. These included the shovels on the rear of the tank, the cables on the sides, 
along with the spare tracks and the barrels of the machine guns. I used a fine brush to do this, attempting to accurately place the paint in the correct places. I repeated this process, but this time using Humbrol 29 Dark Earth on the handles of the shovels. In preparation for the decals, I'm going to apply 135 satin varnish to those areas. I thinned this paint with a little water and then brushed it onto only the areas that the decals were going to be placed. This varnish will help give a smooth surface for the transfers to stick to, whilst also helping to reduce the likelihood of silvering. With that done, it's now time to put on some decals. You don't get very many in this kit, so to that end I decided to soak the entire sheet in warm water to help release them from the backing paper. Humbrol decal fix was brushed onto the model in the areas the decals were going to be placed, and this would help to soften them once they were applied. Now that the transfers have started to release, they were carefully slid off the paper and placed into position. I would go round and apply all the decals very carefully and manipulate them slightly if they weren't quite in the right position or at the right angle. As they started to cure, a further layer of decal fix would be brushed over the top, helping to soften them further and make them appear painted on. I left them to cure overnight and then the next day I sealed them using this cheap matte spray varnish. A quick word of warning, spray paints can damage your lungs, so make sure you use the correct PPE and environment to do this sort of activity. I sprayed this paint from a reasonable distance and applied very thin coats in a side to side motion. This is to help avoid the previous layers from possibly reacting and blistering, which is something I've experienced in the past. Fortunately, this time everything went okay. With that done, it was time to apply a dark wash. Now, I get asked on occasion, can you make your own wash? And the simple answer is yes. I normally use Citadel Non Oil for this step as I quite like the effect that it gives, but for the sake of demonstrating how to make your own, let's take a look. All I did was take some Humbrol 33 matte black acrylic and thin it with water until it looked a little like the consistency of milk. You could add a tiny drop of washing up liquid to reduce the surface tension if you like, but I didn't as I found it worked okay for me. I then brush this very thin black wash over the entire model and it seeps into the recessed details. I will leave it to dry before I move on to the next step. Cotton buds soaked in Tamiya acrylic thinners are now used to remove the excess wash. I did this by rubbing them over the surface until I got a finish that I liked. You might be wondering why the previous acrylic layers aren't also removed but that's why I use the spray varnish. The varnish has protected the previous paint and decals and will stop them from being damaged. With that done, Humbrol 11 Silver was now dry brushed over the tank using the same technique as the tracks earlier. It is my intention that this will help give a metallic effect as if the paintwork has been chipped in places. I then repeated this step by adding some 171 antique bronze into the mix. This would give a more rusty kind of finish to the dry brushing and make it appear less clean. To give a further layer of dirt and grime, some 29 dark earth acrylic was brushed into various areas of the running gear and areas of the hull I thought would be climbed over, thus leaving the residue of dirt and grime. It gives quite a subtle effect which I quite like giving variation in the paint across the hull and reducing the amount of uniformity in the finish. I had seen some pictures online of actual Churchill tanks and there are two radio masts on the rear of the turret. So for those, I thought I would stretch some sprue and make my own. I heated the leftover sprue with a lighter until it started to melt. At this point, the plastic was pulled apart to draw it into a long thin wire, which I held tight until it cooled down. I then cut this wire into two lengths, I thought looked about right. I removed the paint from the top two mounting points on the turret by gently sanding them. Then I applied a small amount of polycement. 
The two aerials were glued into place and I found that I had to nudge them into place as they dried to stop them from falling to one side. With the cement now dry, they were given a coat of Humbrol 32 Dark Grey to blend them in and make them appear less thick. And that's it. That's as far as I went with my build of the Airfix 176 scale Churchill Mark 7. So what do I think of this kit? Well, although it was okay to build, I didn't find it as enjoyable as other kits I've built from the same range. It has got a few fit issues and you might want to use some filler if those gaps and things really bug you. All those little wheels were annoying to do and the fact that I couldn't get some of them to line up properly is a bit annoying. There is quite a bit of flash in places which I had to sand off or cut away as I went through as well. On a more positive note, the decals are actually quite well done. They're well printed and apply well to the model. The painting was relatively straightforward too, and this would be a good practice model for those of you who want to develop your painting skills. One little grievance I do have about this kit is to do with the box and the instructions. Airfix haven't actually told us which specific Churchill Mark 7 that they have depicted in this kit. Normally they tell us it's from a certain regiment or battalion. Not this one though. So your guess is as good as mine. I'm thinking this was used by the British in Normandy or just after Normandy around 1944. Maybe. Putting that to one side, Airfix annotates this as a skill level two. And I would be inclined to agree with them simply because all those little wheels and the fit issues makes it a little more difficult to build. As I mentioned in my unboxing video though, the tools for this kit were originally made in 1961, so naturally it's not up to the standard of more recently designed kits. That and being to 176 scale or more commonly known as 00 gauge here in the UK is a throwback to the time when Airfix used to make model trains and they liked to have a range where everything would fit together. Although it's not far off the popular 172nd scale of model aircraft, some people might notice and dislike the size difference in scale. The particular version I've got here though is from the Vintage Classics range and dates from 2018. At that time it was retailing for £5.99 which is the recommended retail price. Personally, I think that price is a little high for what the kit is, especially seeing as some of the more recent tooled kits like the Airfix P51 and Zero retail for only a pound or so more. So if you can find it cheaper, that would be great, but I certainly would not pay more for it. But anyway, let's wrap this one up. It's an okay kit, which when built will give you a reasonable representation of the Churchill Mark 7 tank. It does have its issues, but they aren't anything that can't be overcome by those of you with a little experience. Personally, I just found it a little underwhelming to build and not one of the most memorable kits I've ever completed. But what do you think of this one? Do you think I did a good job and would you get one for yourself? Let me know down in the comments. Honourable mention to my patrons over on Patreon. Massive thank you to these guys whose amazing contributions allow me to keep making that content you love to watch. To find out more about the perks you get from pledging your support, including behind the scenes stuff and early access to videos, take a look at the link in the description. Don't forget that you can connect with me on social media too. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and my own Discord server. Oh, and if you made it this far and you enjoyed the video, click that like button and please consider subscribing with notifications on so you never miss any modeling content. All that's left to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you on the workbench again next time. Welcome back to the workbench. You join me here as I'm about to build this, the Airfix Churchill Mark 7 in 176 scale. It's already on the shelf. Oh!
Oh, that's a long way to go. It's the same one. This box is empty. 